Dr. Pele Mohopi, thank you so much for joining me on Upfront. Uh, you are the Secretary General of Abalale Base Manjondolo. Uh, lately, uh, members of your organization have been facing threats, uh, physical attacks. In, in early March, two members, uh, Ayanda Ngila and Siabonga Makwele, were actually killed. Uh, your movement has said that the killings were carried out by people connected to the African National Congress, the current governing party. Uh, they, of course, have rejected these claims. Uh, why has your movement faced such violent repression when you're fighting for what are seemingly uncontroversial things, uh, basic human rights, uh, housing, food, and things like that? Um, our movement was formed in 2005. Abbasal Basam Jondo law stands for uh, the right to access land for the poor and marginalized in this country, the forgotten generation. We are the forgotten generation. We live under very inhuman conditions in the shack settlements. We have no access to water. We have no access to um, sanitation. That is the reality that we face as the people who are living in shack settlements in South Africa, post apartheid South Africa. And our forefather did not fight for this. Nelson Mandela did not fight for this. They fought for us to have a, a better life than uh, before apartheid. Ayanda Ngila, a 30 year old. A young man who was who created who was leading a commune during the COVID when life was difficult all over the world. Um, instead of praising such a, a brilliant leadership, the ANC sees uh, the uh, Ayanda Ngila as an enemy because uh, he's a poor young man who is from the settlement, uh, informal settlement, who's organizing outside of the states. Uh, we can say that the, the people have been killed by the, uh, the, the ruling ANC because in 2016, two white councillors of the ANC were convicted and sentenced to life imprisonment. And right now, as I speak to you, they are serving life imprisonment in the maximum Cockstad prison uh, for having killed one of our own uh, activists. So we are killed because we are exposing corruption. We are killed because we are exposing corruption when it comes to allocation of houses that are built by government for the poorest of the poor. But instead, officials in the municipalities in the, in the form of what councillors are selling these houses to middle-class people who do not who want to bypass uh, going to the banks. But houses that are, are meant for the poorest of the poor are given to people who, are, who do not deserve them. And you find that uh, homelessness continues to be the order of the day for us. And we are living under these ho ho homeless, I mean, very inhuman conditions. I, I want to... When I, they I, are... I, Tapita, I want to talk to you about, about housing, for sure. Uh, but I, I don't want to skip past this question of the ANC being directly involved uh, in these killings. You've talked about killings for which members or people connected to the ANC have been uh, arrested, convicted, and sentenced. But yes. the ANC has also rejected uh, quite formally the insinuation that it is involved in the systemic elimination of Abalale Basin Manjolo leaders and members. In fact, the spokesperson for the ANC in uh, KwaZulu Natal, where the killings took place that we referenced, uh, said, You cannot say the ANC has killed people or the ANC has sent people to kill other people. If you have got evidence that so-and-so killed your leader or member, you have an obligation to go to the police and open a case and give evidence. Otherwise, going out and issuing statements that ANC killed people uh, is reckless. So when we're talking about these killings, particularly the ones in early March, uh, what evidence do you have? Uh, what can you offer uh, to substantiate the claim that they were killed by, AN by the ANC? Well, uh, the ANC is in government. Um, we are not saying that the, the ANC is, 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 uh, is killing. There are people who are using the name of the ANC, and the ANC should come out and say, those people are not uh, representing us. So the person who has been behind in the attack of the commune in Ekenana, um, uh, you know, in rendering people, uh, attacking people, threatening people, is an ANC chief who serves in the executive branch of the ANC and uses the name of the ANC. So the ANC, if they are not involved, they should be the ones who are condemning these. Uh, in fact, we have never had them condemning the two white councillors. Uh, no statement was issued when the two white councillors were, were arrested. So you, you, we, we have proof uh, of two ANC officials uh, at high ranking who are arrested today. The ANC never uh, even uh, released a statement. So we have been reporting cases. Uh, the cases of the two year ward councillors were reported, were investigated, and data they were found to be guilty. Uh, but some of the cases, uh, in fact, we have the Morana Commission 
uh, which was a commission that was investigating political killings in Guazul Natal. And we went in, uh, into it uh, and brought forward some evidence. Uh, today, we are still waiting. But, you know, you are fighting against a government um, that is investigating itself. I want to get to the, the root of this question of land, uh, which you referenced a moment ago. Uh, because one of the main promises of post-apartheid South Africa was to redistribute land to black South Africans who had been forcibly removed from their land during the apartheid regime. Uh, can you talk about the breakdown of land ownership in South Africa today? Uh, who benefits from access to urban life and, and, and opportunity? Well, um, the, the issue of land in South Africa is still a major crisis. Um, I, I don't think that the... the the, the legislation that we have put in place uh, have done any justice in ensuring that. I mean, we are talking about 27 years later since the ANC has been in power, but yet a, a person like myself can can claim that cannot claim that they own land in this country. And while the 10% uh, elite whites who were privileged during the apartheid. Um, continue to own the majority of the land in this country. We are we are just landless. We we have no future. I mean, I inherited the shack settlement where I live. And the shack that I live in is a, a, a shack that belongs to my parents. So we inherit poverty. We are still poor as the black uh, 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 people in this country. The majority of black people still suffer the consequences of living under these inhuman conditions where we are faced with fires in the informal settlements, uh, where we lose how, how everything this, in the informal how, how, does this, how does this happen, right? In a post-apartheid moment, uh, many people celebrated the shift in leadership, the face of black president and, and government officials, and yet I'm hearing you talk about uh, a persistent inequality in terms of access to resources, access to land, access to housing. How does this happen? Well, we were sold this idea that we were going to free. Uh, we do have a, a, a freedom of movement uh, and other rights are there, but the right to access economy, the right to access housing, the right to access land that is um, the way we can plant food so we can survive is not there for black people. A, a, a young black person like myself uh, is still saying today that I don't have a place where I can call a home. And my kids would inherit the, fact, the very same fact if I don't fight today. So that's why we are fighting and saying that we will occupy land when, need, when needed to do so, because we are doing this for our kids, we are doing this for our next generation, because it seemed like the, those who have negotiated during the CODESA did not discuss the issue of land and then, which was the most crucial thing. We were dispossessed of our land, and we are still living under these conditions that we are living under because the colonial, the colonial uh, system is still there, visible for us. Um, if you go to a, a place like Cape Town, it's very difficult to access uh, uh, the city when you are black. And, and, and now we have... Um, you know, it's no longer um, about the skin of the, the color of your skin. It's about how much you have, so so you can access the cities. So we occupy land that is closer to the cities because we believe that black people have been de deprived of the right to access the cities. Can you can you, can you describe that for me a bit? Can you describe that for me a bit? Because you know, particularly for my audience's benefit, uh, you're fighting against evictions. You're fighting to access land, as you mentioned, and to do so, you are, as you said, occupying. Uh, vacant and unused lands in urban areas, and, and you're trying to sort of build communities in, inside these spaces. Uh, they're informal settlements, basically. Uh, what do they look like? Who's in them? Uh, how are they structured? Well, um, the informal settlements are, are, are shanty houses built out of wood, uh, out of desperation, because we have no other ways of occupying land. Um, because sometimes we are forced, forcefully removed by the anti-land invasion units, the law enforcement, uh, as well as the, um, in, in, in Johannesburg, the, the, the rent ads where people are removed at gunpoint. Uh, some of them have been killed during the process. Uh, by the way, we've lost 22 activists in Abashal Basam uh, since 2009 when we have been attacked. Um, and, and, of course, um, these shanty houses are easily washed away by floods. We've had people who have been, um, you know, buried alive by the floods in, 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 in the province. We have people who are dying in shed fires because the woods are easily caught uh, the fire. So that, that, that is the kind of life 
that black majority in South Africa live. And you, and you talk about how they're threatened by, by nature, but they're also threatened uh, by violent evictions. In 2020, your organization reported that a private security firm acting on behalf of the Etequini uh, municipality carried out illegal evictions using live ammunition. Uh, several people in the community were hospitalized. Uh, and this is just one example of many. Uh, where do people go after eviction? Well, they have nowhere to go. Um, that's why we, we, we encourage resistance, uh, which is called Inkani in, 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 in Isuzulu. Uh, because we have nowhere. Uh, if, you, if we leave the, the, the land that we've occupied, then we have nowhere else to go. But it is unfortunate, uh, and I'm, I must say this, it is very unfortunate that a government that is supposed to be a, a pro poor the government that is supposed to uh, take care of us, the, the government that promised a better life for us and our parents during, before apartheid, um, today is the very same government is do, that is doing exactly um, what the apartheid government was doing to our parents when they forcefully removed them out of the city. So we are faced with a government that does that, uh, and uh, they are prepared to shoot and kill for such. Um, if not, they will use the local ANC at branch levels to deal with those who are occupying land uh, for survival. We are occupying land for survival. Uh, there have been proposals in government to expropriate and redistribute land uh, to address racial land inequalities. Uh, most recently, there was one in December of 2021. Uh, the proposals all failed. Uh, who is blocking the redistribution of land to black residents uh, and why? Um, the expropriation of land uh, without compensation, for us uh, as a movement, we have said that it will fail because it has failed in many ways. It is like taking land from the white elite and giving it to black elites because it does not speak directly to the people on the ground. We believe that people on the ground must be the voices of this expropriation uh, bill, it must not be something that is in parliament, because what is whatever happens in parliament, we no longer trust the parliament of South Africa. We no longer trust the ANC in parliament. And the other thing that we, 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 we disagree with is the fact that the land must be in the hands of government for the benefit of the people. We know that it doesn't happen in a corrupt government. It will still be, um, um, be in the black elite, and the black elite will be, have control of it. The, the, the ANC lacks political will to actually address the issue of uh, land in this country. And it is only when the people uh, organize from below that we can actually be able to uh, expropriate land without compensation in this country. Tapelo Mahapi, thank you so much for joining me on Upfront. Thank you very much. It's been a great pleasure.